Connect Forth, the radio forum for students. Welcome to the Connect Forth Easter podcast, part one of two. My name is Jack Haggerty, and I will be your host. Coming up, Ryan Louch from our Connect Forth team takes a dive into the world of fortune telling, and Jilly connects with lost relatives. I saw my grand spirit when I was eight. Stacy found out how a food bank in Stirling is coping with an increase in demand, with millions around the UK falling on harder times. This is what we expect, that the people moving into these houses will have virtually nothing. But first, Connect Force Eden Taylor explores what volunteering for Cancer Research UK is like by giving a helping hand in the Stirling branch. Connect, Connect Force feature. Hi, I'm Eden Taylor for Connect Force Radio. Today we will be talking about the different aspects of volunteering for charity. Stephanie Riley visited Cancer Research in Stirling to find out more. There are a number of non-profit organisations in Scotland. One of the well-known charities is Cancer Research UK, which has an expanding number of volunteers spread across the 550 shops in Britain. Here in Stirling we have two shops. I will be having a go at volunteering and getting a look at what it's really like. As well as counting solely on the people to help run the charity, they also have special merchandise that is specific to Cancer Research, there are also annual events and fundraisers to help further raise money. The people that manage the shops are very friendly, helpful and understanding of each individual situation and will help to work out whenever it's easiest for you when you want to help out. Many volunteers come from different backgrounds, have full-time, part-time jobs and will help in their spare time. That may just be an hour on a Saturday or even a few days during the week. We sat down to talk with Helen Mitchell who's a manager at Cancer Research Stirling. Do cash handling, work in the till, do paperwork, visual merchandising, homeware. It really does depend. We like to try and talk to our volunteers and get what they want because then we'll get the best out of them and they'll get the most pleasure out of being here. I think between both shops we're up in 90 volunteers and some of them like do two hours, some four. Um, Every single day is different. The volunteers are different, their personalities are different, the the stock that you get in is completely different, your customers are different. What um, can the volunteers take away from the experience? I suppose it depends what the volunteers want to get for the experience. Some like just to be here, they they may be a bit lonely at home, especially elderly people. (coughs) The younger ones, they can learn skills that can go in their CV, and that's really good for if they're looking for employment, they can build up a really good CV in here. Targets for this shop is about just under £2,000 a week and we make target every week. Every week we make target. Last year, overall, all the shops raised £91 million. Just the shops. That's not including people that donate cash or leave money in their will or extra fundraising like Race for Life and stuff like that. That is just solely the shops. So that's an amazing target. Um, what other events do you get involved in, like within the shop? Like- Anything we can get involved in. And some of the volunteers will come in with ideas like having a coffee morning or the elderly ones maybe have a wee church social night, brick a brack sales, stuff like that. Um, we just get involved in anything we can get involved in, really. Mm-hmm. Anything that can make an extra few pounds for research. Eh? Uh, how many donations do you get? Per day we might get 30 bags. Black bags. Yeah. Just wee bags. Um, TK Maxx also donate loads of end line stock and so does Tesco's. Oh, right. So maybe at the moment it's about once or twice a week we'll go to TK Maxx and pick up their end line stock. And they also have a donation station in there where people, it's a campaign on the radio, and people can donate the bags into there. Good. Um, do you have any advice for people looking to volunteer? Just come, you'll love it. It's an amazing place to be. It's a really diverse, you'll meet loads of different people. It's really a life learning experience, I think it is. And sometimes we get the ones at Duke Edinburgh, so they come at 14 and they'll stay until it's time to go to uni or whatever because they enjoy it. Plus they, they leave with a really good CV and people skills, which is really good to take away. How is it with like, the age difference between 
I think it's great. We have like from age 14 and our eldest one now is 84. And I think they all learn and feed off each other, which is really good. Yeah. See, you've been all the same age and then you're all at the same. It's nice to get other people's interests. And, uh, absolutely. It's, it is really a great place to, to learn a lot of skills, life skills, social skills, building your CV, just everything. Thanks, After talking to Helen, we spoke to some of the volunteers about their experiences. I'm Moira. I volunteer three days a week, uh, Monday, Friday, uh, Tuesday afternoon. I like it. How long have you been volunteering? Uh, over a year and a half. Hale Clark and I work for Cancer Research in the Calendar branch but was trained in the two shops in Stirling. I loved it. It was really great. It's the way of getting back into the job market and people can see your skills and you get your skills updated as well. So communicating with the public as well as with colleagues and volunteers. I think people should volunteer especially if you're looking to get back into the job market. It shows employers that you're willing to get up in the morning and come in and even do a full week's work. So I used to do about 36 hours a week when I worked for a previous charity and done that over time. It's brilliant and I've never regretted it. It's the best thing ever. After visiting the shop and volunteering for herself, Stephanie sat down with us to share her experience. Hiya. Welcome, Steph. How did you find volunteering? It was a lot different than what I expected. Uh, the people in the shop, they were very welcoming and accommodating. And instead of getting put into a role that I didn't know how to do, um, we were able to pick and choose what we wanted to do. Sounds good. Um, would you take up volunteering in the future? Oh, I indeed. Um, I'd definitely consider taking it up. Um, it was great fun. It helps to build you as a person and it boosts your confidence as well. Right. Um, what did you enjoy the most? Probably working with the other, other volunteers and the customers. Oh, it, it was a great feeling. It, aye, it, it was good. Right, well, thanks, Steph. Anytime. Volunteering benefits the charities, the people, and yourself. If you would like to volunteer for Cancer Research or any other charity, you can check out the website at www.cancerresearchuk.org. You can also call or visit your nearest shop for more information. Connect, Connect forth, forth feature. feature. So did you see the new Mad Max movie? Yeah, how awesome was that scene where... I've not seen it. Oh, okay. How about the new James Bond? Yeah, how good was Daniel Craig in it? I've not seen that either. Did you see Jurassic World? I loved it. Seriously, how have you guys seen so many movies? Uh, we have unlimited cards. We can see as many films as we want. Don't be that person who's never seen anything. With a Cineworld Unlimited card, you can see all the movies you can watch for one simple monthly price at many of our fantastic cinemas. You also get a 15% discount on all food and drinks. Enjoy the magic of movies with a Sunny World Unlimited card. Fitness at the campus. Swing into the gym to get the body you have always wanted. It might not be perfect, but it is yours. Hone it, tone it, define it and refine it. Open weekdays at Four Valley College campuses, still in Falkirk Canal. Alloa. State of the art equipment, fitness classes and personal training. With an annual membership ranging from £10 to £25. I would recommend the gym. They've got great facilities and it's great value for money. You can only win with a membership to the gym. Google Fort Valley College Gym for more details. Connect Fourth. Do you believe in life after death? Spiritualists are a very popular way for people to feel connected with lost loved ones. Ryan and Jelly investigated the mysteries of fortune telling. Connect Fourth Feature. Welcome to Connect Fourth Radio. Today we are going to talk about spiritualism. Spiritualism is a religion that contains the main ideas of all religions that there is a life after death, immortality, and the existence of a god. One difference between spiritualism and other religions is the acceptance of the ability, through mediumship, to offer evidence of spirit communication to a recipient and in doing so demonstrate that people survive physical death. I went to Stirling Spiritualist Church and spoke to David Lament to learn more about spiritualism and mediumship. I'm David Lamb and I'm a spiritualist medium. I serve still in Spiritualist Church and it's my job to try and prove there's life after death. I've been a really spirit all my life. Uh, right through school, I've seen spirit. I uh, had encounters where I'd get woken up with spirit, waking me up. Uh, 
seen certain situations, dreamt about people passing before we did. Uh, and really was able to communicate. I first saw my grand spirit when I was eight, and I was in primary four, and she appeared beside my teacher, and she waved, and then later we found out that day she had passed. And things like that happened right up until uh, 2008, 2009, and I first came into the church for healing, and I was made aware how strong the gift was, and sat in circle to develop the gift and enhance it. People should come to the Spiritualist Church to explore their own spirituality. People seem to have this preconception that you need to be lost or in turmoil or grieving to come to a Spiritualist Church, and that is a big part of it, to come when they're hurting, to come when they're lost, and to get that guidance and that support for spirit. But really it's a place to come to just sometimes sit in the quiet, to sit in the energies of the place, because everything's an energy. And even just sitting in the church without getting a message, you're still getting healing. It's a, it's a place where you can find contentment. And going through the personal experiences, when you are in a bad place in life, when you're emotionally upset or that, you can find a strength that you sometimes maybe didn't realise you had. So really you should come to explore the place, to visit it, to hear for your loved ones in spirit. That's what the main part of it is. But also for yourself as well. Jilly Ballantyne went to Stirling Spiritualist Church to experience what a spiritualist reading is really like. I very much made a way with a gentleman that steps forward here. And as this gentleman comes forward, I very much do feel there was a... Uh, the only way I can say this is I want to say that there was a... It's almost like a quick passing, that's the only way I can put it. There was a time to prepare for this gentleman's passing. As my words are stopped, I feel there was a chance to properly say goodbye. Now, I feel this gentleman comes from your dad's side of the family. Mm. Uh, dad's dad spirit side. Yeah. Now, I also need to acknowledge your grandfather steps forward. It actually shows me tears with your eyes. And I need to acknowledge where, just to say to me just recently, there's been a wee bit of emotion driven about you, but you've been bottling it up. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like he says to me, but he has been close to you. You've dreamt about your grandfather. Yeah, and he says, to, he says to me, one, two, three, four, it's either four nights ago or four week, four days, it's somebody with yeah. number four. I also, he talks to me about the rivers in the month of April, which is significant for someone's birthday or an anniversary. He keeps putting April, April, April. A yes, give me a yes. Is there on my grandfather's That's good, because he'll respond to your voice a wee bit more, pal. I also need to acknowledge the rivers. He talks to me about his hand. And yeah, he always used to break his fingers. And it's, would you understand that he always the tip of a finger? I don't, well he, he had it in a cast for a long time. Because he's taken me to the left hand, he's yeah. taken me to the left hand. Now I'm also, he shows me out in a garden. Yeah, uh, really proud of And I also you talk about where there was a rose bush that was planted. My grandson's rose as well. And as long as you can understand that, but I see pink roses, yeah. very strongly. I also need to talk about the Masonic Lodge actually. So I don't know if somebody was in the Masonic Lodge or somebody lived yeah. beside a Masonic Lodge. Who's William? My dad's middle name is William. Because I, I get the name William. I also get the name John. That was my grandfather's name. And again, but I need to give an uncle John as well somewhere. Yeah, um, my grand's like best friend because he was John as well. That's um, been, as long as you can understand that. Would you understand connections to the RAF? Yeah, he was, um, he was um, lodged in Cyprus. He because was he an accountant. Because he, yeah. he shows me the wings at RAF. I also need to talk about... See, you, the month of December. But it's like I'm just going to say I'm getting taken up towards Christmas time. Yeah. It was either something significant, it was a birthday or an anniversary. Yeah, my, my grand's birthday was in December. That's fine, as long as you can understand that. She's yeah. also spirit side. No, she's still here. Because you passed the love on the grand. Yeah. I keep hearing Auntie Mary had a canary. So I don't know if the name Mary is significant. Yeah, my grand and grandpa's best friend. She was Mary, she was like obsessed with birds. That's fine, <laughs> That's, as long as it makes sense yeah. to you. I then interviewed Jilly about her experience. Were you sceptical about getting a reading done? Um, I've had like tarot cards and that done before and I've um, went to a psychic before but it was kind of all like back alley like stuff like it wasn't like um, what I would say is, is probably just for money like it's not accurate and I thought, I thought a lot of it wasn't accurate so when I went into this kind of experience I kind of took a step back and decided I wasn't going to get my hopes up about it because there's no point being really really hopeful about something and then you can't get a reading or maybe nobody steps forward so I'd say I was a little bit sceptical but at the same time um, I kind of had a little bit of hopes for it as well. And how did you find it? Um, I felt like really relieved like it was a really relieving experience I didn't expect it to like affect me as much as it did um, I found that when I left like I immediately felt like when he um, like closed the reading I immediately kind of felt like a weight lifted off me like I felt um, really good and for all that like there was some stuff that I found maybe wasn't 
um, relevant to me or that sort of thing like the stuff that was relevant like it was kind of crazy because I would have never thought that some like nobody could guess that sort of thing and um, to have to be able to especially when somebody's died so suddenly to be able to have somebody apparently having him speak through somebody um, it was a really really amazing experience and I'd definitely do it again thank you thanks for listening I'm Ryan Leitch for Connect Forth Radio Connect Forth, keeping you connected. Connect, Connect Forth, Forth feature. feature. A book. It's a world on its own. A world made of words where you live for a while. Immerse yourself in countless stories, magic and wonder when you pick up a book from Waterstones. If you need to escape for a while, you might just discover the perfect book to do that. So what are you waiting for? It's time to discover new worlds today. You can also collect all your educational books for your studies. Download Journey Days from the App Store today and get a 10% discount if you spend £25 or more. You can even order a book online at waterstones.com and collect it at your nearest store paying the online price. If you don't fancy that, you can get a free home delivery when you spend over £25. Come on down to the High Street Falkirk and the Thistle Centre Stirling. Terms and conditions apply. If you need help coping with stress, anxiety or any other issues making a negative impact on your life, Forth Valley College has their own counselling service and our college counsellor can speak to you in complete confidentiality. The Learner Advisory Team can help by making a referral to the counselling service who can then help to resolve your difficulties within a number of counselling sessions. If you feel that accessing this service would be beneficial, then please speak to a learning advisor at main reception at any one of our four campuses. Connect Forth. Our final feature to round off part one covers an issue that affects thousands of people around the Forth Valley area. Recent hard economic times have left many families relying on the generosity of others. Correspondent Stacey Lang spent the day at Startup Sterling experiencing firsthand how the food bank system is coping. Connect Forth Feature Happy Easter Happy Easter Happy Easter Happy Easter Hi, I'm Stacey Lang. Between 2014 and 2015, the Trussell Trust recorded over 1 million food parcels being given out with food bank usage on the rise, we decided to visit a local charity in Alloa that provides a food bank service alongside other community-focused programmes. The Gate Charity in Alloa does more than provide a food bank service, though. It provides starter packs for the recently rehomed homeless, it provides a soup kitchen-style service called the Soup Pot, and it also runs a community cafe. During our visit, I turned volunteer and tried my hand at preparing a food parcel, helping put together a starter pack and spoke to the volunteers and staff that make this place a welcoming refuge for some of the hungriest and most down-on-their-look people in our community. Sandy was the man with a plan when it came to creating home starter packs. Home oh, packs are uh, made up of people who are moving from uh, the uh, homelessness into the first tenancy. So it's basically the first things that we would need in the new place. So these are really for people that might have nothing to start off with. This is what we expect, that the people moving into these houses will have virtually nothing. We start off with uh, a box to put things in, and we stick a basin in there as a pan brush, utensils, wooden spoon, tin opener, and washing up cloth. Is this a completed pack? No, that's person? that's not a completed pack. There's yet. more? There's more. Wow! Yes, I know how to do it. Sandy added loads to the box. By the end, there were cleaning products, quilts, pillows, sheets, pots and pans. I couldn't believe the amount they added. It seemed so generous. But I couldn't help but wonder, where did it all come from? We purchased them. Uh, we decided when we first started up this a number of years ago that... Uh, Everything should be new. How do people access this if they need it? They get it through their, uh, either it comes from the local authority, from Oakview Housing, from uh, anybody else who's in a position to be uh, nominating people for it, and uh, sometimes Women's Aid or the CAB. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Sandy. Okay. It's been brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.
But I didn't stop there. I ran round to find Adrienne, who was determined to turn me into a food parcel packing pro. We have a list that we work to, uh, and we take from the shelves here. So if you want to start off first, Stacey, and uh, pick, up, pick up three tins of soup, pick up a rice pudding and a custard, some sort of fruit. Now you want to pick up some sort of slicing meat, so that can go into sandwiches. So a lot of thought goes into these packs. They really try to work out how each bit of food could be used and they give enough to last a week. The pack we were making was for a single person and by the end my shopping basket was incredibly heavy. It's quite heavy isn't it? It is very heavy, yeah. Yeah, there's probably about 8 kilograms of food there. You get a good And that's just out. a single person, that's for three, di three meals a day. How do people access this? Through referrals. Through referrals. So they're all referral agencies. Referrals could be through the local authority, the CAB or a few other agencies. It had been great learning how these packs were put together, but I really wanted to speak to the woman who keeps it all ticking over. Marie Brownhill, the centre manager, told us how it all began. Okay, over ten years ago, one of the residents of the church here, when it was an active church, noticed a group of young men hanging about outside so she re re later discovered that it was youths that stayed in the local hostel that had to be out from nine till nine, seven days a week. So they started a soup pot and our food bank started about four years ago with the minister just giving out small parcels of food. But now it's one of the gate's biggest projects. For example, last year we put out just over 55,000 meals to people in Clackmannanshire. There was a 55% increase in 2015 compared with 2014, and it's increasing all the time. Um, okay, now you mentioned the soup pot before. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the soup pot that, as it is now? Well, now it's open Tuesday and Thursday. On a Thursday, it's only open from October to February because the need kind of goes a bit quieter throughout summer months. But it's opened at the moment Tuesday and Thursdays, 12 to 1, and around about 40 people per day attend. And the, the type of people that attend our soup pot is vulnerable adults and children. The day that we attended the soup pot, it was in full swing, and we met some young women, many of whom were there with young children. We asked them what attracted them to the soup pot. Warm meal, um, company for the hour, we get good company, uh, meet new friends, just chance to chat. Well, the staff are amazing, they're nice people, um, you, also, you get a wee bit of lunch as well, it's good for the kids, and it's one way to actually get to know people, to be honest. So whilst the food is of course important, a lot of young people are here out of the need for companionship. Isolation is something that the gate aim to tackle. Marie told me that this is one of the reasons their community cafe is so successful. A lot of older people attend and for many it's the only social interaction they might get all week. Keep these people in your thoughts this Easter and why not go along and donate an extra egg for a child who might go without. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Connect Fourth feature. Thanks for listening to part one of the Connect Fourth Easter podcast. Stick around for part two for more interesting features from our team. I've been Jack Haggerty, and you're listening to Connect Fourth Radio. Connect Fourth, keeping you connected. Connect Fourth, the radio forum for students.